Polygon modeling is really versatile in terms of what you can create. So we're going to create something a little more complicated this time. This time we're going to create a coffee cup. Now I want to show you a couple of tips that will help you find good resources that you are legally allowed to use. So currently if I just search coffee cup, it brings up all sorts of images. Now. A lot of these images are owned by someone else. In fact, most of them are. And just like you don't want to put your art online and having someone else take it and use it for free, these people don't either. So we want to make sure that we're, we're looking for art that has been stipulated that it is allowed to be used by other people. So one of the ways we can do that is under Tools, under Usage Rights, I can choose labeled for reuse. And that means it's only going to show me images that the creator of that image has said is okay for other people to use. Now I did a little searching um, earlier and I found this image. Um, I wasn't necessarily for sure what Bangla link is, but it turns out that's a internet service provider and phone service provider in Bangladesh. But this is one of the images that was marked for free to use. Um, I also noticed that it was linked to a website called Pixabay. And Pixabay is another location where you can find royalty-free images that are free to use. So there are a lot of different places we can find these images that are free for us to use um, in our own creative projects. So I'm going to download this image. Now, I don't necessarily need the highest resolution version, but if I hit free download, maybe the 1920 by 1080 version. If I hit download, it's going to ask me to sign in. Um, I'm not a ro robot. I'm not a robot. Download. And I'm going to put this in my source images folder of my breakfast scene. And we'll go ahead and name this cup ref for reference. Now you'll see that in our breakfast scene, under the source images, we now has a, have this cup reference image. So this may seem like this object is too simple to actually need a reference, but we're going to use it for scale, proportion, and to figure out the correct shape of our handle. And we're going to also use this just to learn how to bring reference into Maya so we can use it. Now, if I go into my four view mode, I'm going to choose my front view. And while in the front view, I'm going to click this button here. This is going to create a special kind of object called an image plane. Now, it will, for the most part, look very similar to creating a polygon plane, but this is not a polygon. And the cool thing about this is this image plane will stay visible no matter which render settings we have for our viewport. So if I click this, it's going to automatically say, which image do you want to use for this image plane? Now you'll notice it immediately took me to my source images folder in our project, and that's because my project has been set. So you need to make sure to set your project before doing any of this. If you don't set your project, this image plane object will stop working correctly on different computers or maybe even the next time you open it on the same computer. So make sure you set your project before you do this next step. So I'm going to click cup reference and hit open. And you're going to see what it does is it brings in this image of the cup on an object in our scene. And if I go to other viewports, you'll see that it's an actual 3D object. It's something I can move. And so I would like to scoot it back just a little bit, just so I can kind of get it away from my table here. And it's definitely way too big. So I'm going to scale this down to be an appropriate size for our table. So if I zoom in here, I can use this angle to see roughly what would be the right size for our coffee cup. I like a lot of coffee, so this seems like about the right size for me. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the center. I'm going to turn off some of these other objects. Maybe move my milk jug over a little bit to keep it out of the way. Um, and what I want to do is in my side view, I want to move this to where it's kind of centered around our origin. So now from this front view, I can use this image as a reference for creating my coffee cup. Now again, the reason we use an image plane is because if I hit four to go to wireframe mode, everything else will go to wireframe, but I'll still be able to see the image in my image plane. And I can go back to five or even six. So the next question is what object do we start with in order to model this coffee cup? Now, there are actually a handful of different answers to this. Um, we could start with a box if we wanted to. Um, we could start with a sphere if we wanted to. But the problem with those objects is we would have to manipulate them a lot more in order to start getting the shape of this coffee cup. The thing we want to ask ourselves is which object is going to get me closest to this coffee cup from the very beginning? Which object am I going to have to manipulate the least in order to get a believable model of a coffee cup? Now, there's a couple of options. If I go to create polygon primitive, you'll see that we have cylinder as an option, but you may also notice that further down we have pipe. So these are very similar objects. Let's, let's create one of each. I'll go ahead and create a pipe and I will create a cylinder. And in the perspective view, we'll look at both of them off to the side. Now you'll notice that our cylinder is a solid cylinder object. And so one of the issues we may have with creating a coffee cup is there's no hole in the top of it for the coffee. Our pipe has the opposite issue. If we put coffee in it, it would fall through and land on the floor. Right? It has no bottom. So actually either of these will work. And that's one of the complicated parts about modeling is that there's no, no single it's there's, and that's one of the most complicated parts about modeling is there's no single correct answer. One modeler may use the cylinder to get there. The other one may use the pipe. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and start with a cylinder. And that's because I'm thinking a couple of steps ahead and asking myself, what are the next few steps that I'm going to have to do in order to get this closer to the coffee cup? Some of that will come with experience and trial and error. So let's just go ahead and delete our pipe by selecting it and hitting delete. And I'm going to go back to my front view and I'm going to move my cylinder into place to try to line it up with my current background image plane. Now I can't see the image plane right now. So if I hit four, now I can see the wireframe on top of the image plane and I can use this as a way of manipulating this object. Now you want to be careful when you're scaling. It would be very easy to just say, oh, I'll scale in this one axis. But if I do that, I'm actually making my cylinder squat, right? I want to scale the entire object. That way we stay in the same proportion and then I can just make it a little taller. And I'll go ahead and move mine up just a little bit. I may also, if I need to move the image plane, I can always still select it. Sometimes you have to pull back and select it like this, or you can pick it in your outliner. And I'm just gonna do that to try to move it up to line up with the table just a little bit better. There we go. So now I have a base shape that should line up pretty closely with what a real coffee cup would look like in this scene. So there's a couple of things that we need to do now. One, we need to try to get that hole in the top of the coffee cup, and we need to try to get this handle on the side of the coffee cup. Um, I don't necessarily need all four of these views. So to simplify things a little bit, I'm going to go to panels, layouts, 
and choose two panes side by side. And for my two panes, I'll use my perspective view and under orthographic, I'll use my front view. And so now I can see both of these at the same time and it allows me to get a little bit more accurate of a model. So some of you may already have some ideas on how we can get that hole in the top of our model. Um, however, there are several options for how we can do this, but the easiest is probably just going to be to extrude it. Now I will point out, we can add some additional subdivision caps if we would like to where we can have more detail to push in. And we could also add some more height caps. But rather than do that, I'm just going to leave mine kind of simple for right now. And I'm just going to choose these triangle faces along the top. So this will be a little time consuming, but I could just select these by holding shift. Sometimes your scale or move or rotate gizmo will get in the way. If you hit Q, it will hide that. And so then I can select these a little easier. There's also, this is also a good time that we could practice some selection tricks. So for example, I could go to the top of this model and drag select all of those faces. And obviously I selected all of them, but I also selected some other stuff that I may have not meant to, like the faces on the bottom of our model. So I could alternate this though by holding control and deselecting the bottom faces. And so now I just have the top faces selected. This means that I can extrude just these top faces. If I hit control E to extrude and select the scale option on this and scale these in, you'll see that now I'm making some extra geometry along the edge to account for the lip of our model. I'm going to extrude again because if I just move down it's going to mess up that lip. So if I hit control E again I can push that new geometry down into the mug. I can look in my side view here to see if I've pushed it down far enough. Now I also want a couple of extra subdivisions along the inside. And the reason for that is if I tried to smooth my mug right now, it's, it's going to look pretty weird. So if I add some additional divisions in this extrusion, now that should hold some of its shape on the inside a little better. Whenever I want to get out of the extrusion tool, again, I just hit W. Now let's talk about what's happening when I hit smooth, when I hit the three button to smooth this. So Maya again is trying to round off all of this area that I have not given enough information about. And so I'm getting this rounded section on the bottom instead of it holding its solid shape. So one of the ways I can do that is just to add some additional subdivisions in here as well but I've already kind of gone too far just to go back to my inputs and add additional subdivisions. I could try that, but you'll see that it's going to mess up the model pretty badly. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to insert new edge loops in the locations where I need them. So if I go to Mesh Tools and Insert Edge Loop, I'm going to insert one really close to the bottom of my mug. And what this should hopefully do is when I smooth it now, it will retain its shape a little bit better at the bottom. The other thing is, even though I do want the top of this to be rounded, it's kind of rounding a little too much. I want it to preserve its shape a little bit. So I'm gonna add another edge loop here. Something I usually like to do is I can also add a little bit of an edge loop on the top here and on the inside of the mug as well to get just a little bit more definition. And then I can scale some of this in to start getting a better shape to my mug. If I double click here, 
I can move that up a little bit. And I start getting a little bit more control of how I'm shaping this mug. I'm going to insert a few more edge loops up and down the body of my mug as well. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. And I'm just gonna kind of put these randomly and we'll reposition them here in just a minute. So I'll put maybe three or four in here. Okay. Now the reason I did that is because if I go to this view and hit W, I'm just gonna go back to my object mode here. Um, I want to be able to position some of these edge loops to line up with my handle. So if I right click and go to edge and double click on that edge to select it, I can now move it up and down in order to line that up with my handle. The same with this one. If I double click here, I can line that up and down with my handle. Now you'll see that when I'm moving these, it's moving some of the ones I'd already positioned. And so some of that is just, I need to line these up in the unsmoothed version and just add some additional edges to help it retain its shape. And so just to sort of clear up some of that, I'll put a couple of edge loops in this middle section here as well. Insert edge loop. Maybe something like that. And so you see now when I hit three, it kind of retains that shape, but my edges are still pretty much in the location I want them to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this because this next part can sometimes cause some issues. And that's actually a workflow technique that is really good, is if I go right now, File, Increment and Save, I can always come back to this file. If I start working on something and I mess something up, I can always reopen base models.0002 and I will be back at this location and I can just try again. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. Now, what I need to do right now is I need to try to get this handle out of our coffee cup. One of the things a lot of people have a tendency to do is to just create a new cylinder or new object to try to make that handle. And although there's ways of making that work, that's actually not going to be the easiest way. So let me show you is if I created this torus object, obviously it's really big, I can scale it down to start to make it a little bit more coffee cup handle size. I could rotate it exactly 90 degrees. And start trying to position this to become my coffee cup handle. And a lot of people will do something like this and just call it quits. Or even go in here to our torus and maybe make the radius a little smaller and be like, look, I'm done. And you're not, a couple of reasons. If I look in here, you can see my handle. So even if I went in there and deleted those faces, right, I'm still not done because we can tell just by looking at it that this is two objects, right? And if we look at our coffee cup, underneath here, it doesn't look like two objects. These are actually, these are connected together pretty well. Um, they were probably originally made out of a clay that was fired in a kiln and that fused them together. And then on top of that, there was a glaze on top of them that made it all one contiguous smooth object. And we can just tell because we've looked at objects all of our life that this is two different objects. We're getting this one object that I've just kind of shoved into another object. So that is not the correct way of doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that entire cylinder. Um, and although we could have used that cylinder to sort of stitch this together, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to find some faces on this model that I can extrude to start to get, it, get this handle. Now, I believe that those faces are going to be these two here. A trick to being able to select those, you'll notice that if I hit four, my wireframe, um, our grid, 
underneath our table here, this gray line, lines up with this edge. And that's just because when we created our model, we created it with an even number of spans. So that means that the faces I want to be able to extrude are the ones that are going to line up with the grid in the front. So I can sort of drag select and you'll see that I'll get those two faces right there. So I want to be able to extrude those. The other two I want to be able to extrude are these two. So I just held shift and selected those as well. Now there's a couple of different ways we can do this, but I'm going to do it the way we did earlier in some of those previous videos. I'm just going to hit control E and extrude all of these faces outward. Now you'll notice that my extrude tool immediately has this arrow. And if I grab the blue arrow and start moving them, that's working, but if I pull it too far, you'll notice they, they start getting very wide, right? And that's because it is extruding outward from the face. So instead of using that move tool there, I'm just going to hit W. And that takes me back to my original move tool. I've extruded these objects, I just haven't moved them yet. And so now I can just move those straight outward and they don't flare out quite as much. I can also start to scale those in just a little bit because that handle is probably a little smaller. Now, believe it or not, we're almost done because I just want to get these two faces connected together. I'm not going to worry about getting this shape perfect just yet. So what I'm gonna do is hit delete. And so now I have these two open faces. And if I go back to the unsmoothed version, you can kind of see that. Now if I grab these top edges, there, and these bottom edges down here, I can move those forward just so we have like a gap there where we can see. And what I really want to do is line up or connect these edges to these edges. Now we've already learned a couple of ways we could do that, and I'm just gonna show you both ways now. We can either go to Mesh Tools and use our Target Weld tool to weld this edge to this edge and this edge to here. So we could either do it this way This may be a little more difficult to see. And now we have those connected. Or I could go back and we could bridge these sections. So I could do W and I have this edge and this edge selected, this edge and this edge selected. And I could go to edit mesh bridge, or I could go to my poly modeling toolkit here and do bridge. And that's just going to connect those faces together. I'll do the same thing here. And this is going to require a little navigation to select that and that. I'm going to hit the F key to kind of focus on that. And again, hit bridge. Now I know what you're thinking. This doesn't look anything like our handle, right? Now if I hit three, it starts to look a little closer, but it's still not exactly right. But this is where I want to be. And the reason for that is this amount of faces is very easy to manipulate. If I had hundreds of edge loops around here and they were incorrect, I would have to manipulate every one of them. Right now, I just have to start manipulating the ones I currently have and try to get that closer to this shape. So I could go in here to vertex, grab these vertices, and start manipulating them, getting them just a little closer to this shape. Now, 
I'm not going to be able to get it perfect just because I don't have enough information. This is the point in which I will need to add additional edge loops. So I'll go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and I'll just start adding some more edge loops in here in order to get my shape. Now you'll see that once I start adding them, it kind of messes it up a little bit. And then I have to go back to the Move Tool, grab these vertices, and start re-manipulating them again. you're going to start to see that we're able to get a lot more of this shape than you might expect with only a small number of edge loops. And when I go to my perspective view, it's looking pretty good. Now again, we could always grab all of these and scale them in just a little bit if we wanted to, because I think that handle is a little wide at the base. So maybe something like that. And that's looking much better. We can continue to refine these. If I go back and forth between one and three, you can see that there's still some more room for additional definition in here if we wanted to add it. But as long as we're going to smooth it or render it with the smooth preview, we're probably pretty close to done at this point.